All right, so right here we have the Jing pad, and I went ahead and asked you guys what you would like to see next. And overwhelmingly, you guys are very curious about how well or if this thing can even run Android applications. And it's definitely going to be a full-fledged planned feature for release. Right now, they just started working on it, so it is very limited when it comes to the applications that you can download, use, and the functionality of even those applications. But with that said, there are some Android apps that currently do work on this, even in its incredibly early alpha stage. So in this video, I'm going to show you kind of the document they sent me to go ahead and get this working, as well as demonstrate some of the applications actually opening up and functioning surprisingly well. All right, so we're on the Jing pad now, and you can actually see compared to last time we looked at it, we have a lot of different things going on. I've been playing with it quite a bit and figuring out what does and doesn't work on it. One of the things that works absolutely magnificent here is LibreOffice Writer. And that's how I went ahead and opened up this Word document, which has the information on Android applications. It's not really touch friendly, but you can definitely use it. Here it says the evaluation instructions for the Android compatibility environment. Uh, to go ahead and get it, all it wanted me to do was do sudo apt update, full upgrade, and install the Android Combat package. Do a system reboot, and from there on I could do sudo apt install and then the specific app name. Uh, if we go scroll down a little bit, if I can grab it, scroll down, and here we have the applications that are currently available to us. And then right here it says precautions and known issues, lock screen and lock interface will freeze for about five seconds, and some other things to start Android app, click desktop icons on the regular ac uh, exit app is not supported yet. And like I said, this is very new and just the fact that they're getting this working is pretty cool. And then down here we have our specific instructions for installing these applications. So it's about now that I want to mention, we saw in the original video I did reviewing this, which by the way, if you want to check that out, you can hit the I link in the description and check out the specifications of this thing. But right now their app store is incredibly limited. There's about six applications in it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that's all you have access to. You have the Ubuntu repository, so you could get a lot of different ARM applications on this thing at the moment. But in addition, when they roll out more Android applications, it's going to be integrated into their app store with all the other Linux applications. So that's where you're going to want to go ahead and download those. But as of now, we can only download the very limited amount of Android applications through the terminal. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is actually install Fruit Ninja. And to do that, we're just going to want to go over to our terminal application and do sudo apt install Fruit Ninja. And like I said just a second ago, this is not going to be how you do it in the future. You're going to be able to do it through their application store. But for now, let's go ahead and do that. Type in our super secure password, which is one through six. Hit enter. And then you can see it's beginning to install this Android application. All right, so the download is complete and it's doing the installation process. Now downloading from the uh, Jing OS website is kind of slow, but it does work. So now that the application's installed, it should be right on our desktop. So let's go ahead and slide up and you can see we have Fruit Ninja. Right now the languages for these applications is in Mandarin, but they said by the time they officially releases, all this is gonna be fixed. So let's go ahead and launch this, accept the terms of service and privacy policy, obviously. <laughs> And now we are in. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to classic mode and just play a quick match of this. So let's go ahead and skip, play game. And you can see it's fairly responsive when it comes to the uh, touch. The, uh, ah, <laughs> already off to a good start. The uh, actual system has fairly good specifications. It's an eight core ARM processor at a, I believe it's, Four of the cores are at 1.8 gigahertz and two of the cores are at 2.0 gigahertz. So the specifications, it's not no Raspberry Pi for sure. It, it can really do some work. And <laughs> it's hard to play this and talk at the same time, but I'm purposely gonna mess up here real quick and install some more applications. Let's hit the bomb or let it go out. But you can see it works pretty well just cause I suck at it and I'm kind of at a weird angle how I'm sitting. I'm just giving excuses to why I do so bad. Let's get out of there. 
Uh, you see multi gestures and everything with the Android applications works perfectly fine. Go ahead and swipe that up to close out the application. Uh, what I'm going to do real quick, because it does kind of take a little bit of time to install these, is I'm going to install the other applications that I do not have installed, so we could go ahead and open those up. Alright, so I went ahead and got everything else installed. You can see if I go ahead and swipe this up, now we can see I have that whatever garden app that is. If I swipe over, I also have WPS and their to-do application. Now let's go ahead and check out, let's see what this is, because I honestly have no idea. Um, maybe this one? Uh, I like purple. <laughs> Confirm. Uh, okay. Uh, so this isn't really the best one to demonstrate for at least my channel. But you can see this is another Android application working well. Let's get out of that one. One I'm interested in is WPS Office. Let's go ahead and open that up. Alright, again, Mandarin stuff. Hopefully they'll fix that pretty soon so I can actually know what's going on. Uh, let's allow it to access my device. Uh, sure, we'll allow it to make calls. Uh, I'm assuming that's to continue, and we have WPS Office. If I go ahead and open up a Word document here, you can see it. It works pretty good. Oh, did I just close it out all the way? No, I didn't. Good. Uh, the touch capabilities are good. We just opened up an image. If I go down, you can see it's very responsive. And if I go ahead, go in somewhere, and let's just start typing typing something it all works good uh, I'd go a little more in-depth but I don't know what's going on at all one thing you kind of notice here that's a con that hopefully they work on soon is the top bar is kind of cutting off the Android application so hopefully they make that automatically disappear when they do fully integrate and release this feature additionally we have this garden application I'm not sure what it is but we'll go ahead and open it up just to demonstrate that it can launch uh, Gardenscapes, so if you play this game, uh, you could play it right now on the Gene Pad if you would like to. Alright, we'll accept their policy, hit play, and overall the responsiveness is nice. You can see, the one thing I noticed is I'm not sure if audio works. I mean, it's up all the way, but the audio doesn't come through yet, so let's go ahead and skip out of here. And uh, go to their main menu or whatever and pick your name. The keyboard doesn't work either. Oh, it does on this one. The keyboard didn't work on Candy Crush, but it does work on here. You can see the virtual keyboard did not come up. That's one of the uh, issues with it. Uh, they have Candy Crush, and this one actually works fairly well again. Uh, I've noticed that these Android applications in this current version, or what they've done so far, can't really connect to the internet yet, and hopefully that's another thing that uh, gets fixed fairly soon, especially before they uh, launch this to the public. So you can see Candy Crush, very responsive. Uh, it's not my favorite game in the world, definitely, but it's nice to see that this is functioning very well on this. I'm excited to try out games like uh, the mobile Call of Duty game and things like that when their uh, library actually launches and they have a lot of the different Android applications. But we can see that this works pretty good no idea what's going on just matching three uh, close this out another one that I'm really looking forward to is OneNote yes it is a Microsoft application but for my school uh, they use the uh, office 360 stuff so it did open a second ago so it's probably just taking it a sec let's just be patient there we go I tapped it a couple more times and it went ahead and opened up but you can see I oh cool this works uh, OneNote seems to be working pretty good, uh, again with the online thing, if that worked right now I'd actually be able to use this on a day to day basis, but if I go ahead and try to sign in, it uh, cannot connect the server, again hopefully they fix that, but if I go ahead and start typing away, it works very well, and it's very responsive when it comes to the actual touch interface, and uh, multi touch gestures, so you can see if I go ahead and zoom on in, zoom on out, everything seems to work fairly well other than there are uh, a little bit of things they need to work out and like I said this was just released not not even released they had to send me a thing to show me how to do it it's not even integrated within GeneOS natively yet but when it does it's gonna be awesome and I'm really looking forward to the future development of this so as of this early alpha release that that's basically about what we have for now but overall, it's definitely going in the right direction, and I'm really looking forward to 
Uh, what they continue developing right now you can see I have uh, one note still open up in the background I'm excited for those to be able to connect to the internet that's one of the things I'm looking forward to again if you're interested in learning more about this device I'll link to my initial review uh, as I use this and as I learn more about it I'm definitely going to be doing a another overview of the software and how everything's performing from a hardware standpoint it's magnificent Jing OS is still in its early stages so there's a lot of hit and miss type situations. Uh, one of the things I noticed out of the gate after recording when I went and tried using different applications is the virtual keyboard doesn't like to come up for anything except for the native Jing OS application. So I'm excited for that to be able to work so I could use it more without the uh, keyboard attached, which by the way is an absolutely wonderful keyboard. Um, it works great for what it is. But with all that said, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe so you do not miss any future uploads, whether it's uh, Linux, the Jingpad, or just general tech overall. Comment down below letting me know what you think of how they're attempting to implement Android applications. And with all that said, I do hope you all have a beautiful day and goodbye.